Uh oh, it is snowing. We are getting the blizzard of 2024. Look at that. I'm taking my little, little buddy out here for a walk and he, at first he saw that snow coming down hitting him on the nose. He didn't know what to think. <laughs> he didn't even, then he said, oh, I know what that is. So he decided to come on out and do his little whiz thing in my yard. <laughs> well, hello again. Today we're going to strip down the chassis a little bit. Not strip it down, but remove some tubes and things like that. And we're also going to repair this little rip, this little tear right here. That's about all we're going to do. We're going to go nice and easy, nice and slow. I'm not going to crunch everybody with tons of information. Take it slow. Take it easy. If you don't have time for that, then find another hobby. Okay, you got to have patience. You got to take your time. There's no rush to this stuff. And when you get done, it should work perfectly, and you'll be proud of yourself for what you did. Okay, here it goes. All I'm going to do is, uh, this is the dryer cloth right here. It's really tough stuff. I used one. Don't You don't get one out of the box. You want it to be used, and uh, it's tough. It's strong. I'm going to go ahead and cut this corner out. I already cut one piece, one side of it. Just cut a little piece out. Come on, baby. Okay, there we go. Now, keep, uh, keep a couple of those things folded inside of a sandwich bag somewhere on your parts drawers or something like that and you'll always have it that's how I do her I don't have to always have to dry clothes to get one <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and cut this little piece right here I'm going to cut it a sort of a moon shaped thing come down and come around and then just after I get that cut I'll you know trial and error until I get it the shape I want all right, that's about what I want, and uh, you can use a pencil eraser to move it around. You won't damage the speaker. See, if you try to use a pencil point, you're liable to stick it to the speaker again. <laughs> Just kind of move it around gently, 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 until you get it. You say, yep, I think I just about got it the right shape, right like that. I'll get it. There you go. Then we'll take the uh, we'll take the liquid tape, and we'll put that on the speaker cone, the old cone first. All right, we've got the liquid tape on. Now we take this and we just put it right over the top, like so. And again, we use our pencil eraser to move it to where we want it. Press it down gently, gently, very gently. Keep in mind, this is not a beauty contest. We're looking for structural support of the speaker cone. Okay. And we're just going to kind of dab it over the top a little bit more. Not much, just a little bit. Cover the edges. When this dries, it'll be just super strong. It'll never break again. Now you go ahead and turn the speaker cone around. Like so. Now you can do this with even, you know, very, very large rips. As long as the entire cone is intact. I've had holes as big as my thumb, you know. To, I've been able to patch around them. We'll just set this to the side now and let it dry. And what I plan to do after I get it, after I get this uh, dry, I'm going to put another little dab on the bottom down here, right there. We'll, we'll, just not much. I'm just I'm not going to put any of the dryer cloth. Just put a little bit of the you know, the uh, liquid tape down there. This stuff is so good. I mean, it's just so versatile for, for used for so many things. Well, there it is, nice and dry. A little thin coat is all it took to patch that one up. Very tough. Now, and on the back, I just went ahead and put a little dab on there. That's all. That's got to dry yet. Meanwhile, I'll just go ahead and set this up here. And when it dries on the back, I'll put the tape on. And we'll bring that out at a later date. You notice I have all the power off, all the power. And now we're going to go ahead and unplug it. We won't be powering this thing up until it's ready to go next time. It could be, it's going to be several videos and we're not going to power up until, you know, there will be no wine before it's time. I'm going to take the tubes out of the radio. I'm going to put them in this bag right here. I want you newbies to pay attention now. This is very important. I'm not going to just plunge in and start tearing stuff apart and everything. We're going to go slow. We're going to teach folks that want to learn. Some people uh, say, I'd love to restore an old radio. Or I have my old grandpa's radio. It's been sitting around for years. A uh, non-battery type. This is an AC radio. And maybe you'd like to learn how to do it. Now keep in mind, when you work on these things, you work at your own risk. These things are dangerous. These things can kill you. 
and they will kill you, and they have killed you. Uh, the first radio, as I said, I ever worked on was one of these, uh, Airline 62-198. And uh, I had a tube that was loose here, this one in particular, this one right here. And I reached over. See, you don't know before you get these radios, where, where if you get one off of eBay in particular, you don't know what the last chump did on this radio. He's selling it maybe to get rid of it because he screwed it up and he can't deal with it anymore. Don't trust them and don't trust the uh, seller. He's just dumping, he's either dumping it off because he found it in another flea market and he's just doing a, a flip. And, uh, or he was one of these guys that worked on it and he just gave up. He said, I can't fix it. I'm tired of this crap. I'm going to give it. And there's no telling what he's done underneath this chassis. So you got to be extremely careful, extremely careful because what he did, what he did might have killed you, might kill you. Now, now look, I'm going to give you an example. On the first one I had, the radio wasn't working so hot. This was in 2008, the exact same model. Then I looked over and I said, oh, look at here. And it was plugged in. It was kind of coming and going a little bit. And I said, what is causing that, you know? And I said, I think, oh, I see what's going on. I don't have that, pl that tube plugged in all the way. So I went ahead and took my thumb like that and I pushed down on it to seat it into the socket. And holy mackerel, my thumb just, it, it was just shot, voltage shot right through there. It's not supposed to do that. This is a metal uh, tube. There's glass underneath. With a metal a metal case. What happened was this uh, pin one on these tube sockets, where you use metal tubes, pin one has to be grounded because it's connected to the metal. Well, they had disconnected that, and when I went like that, ooh, it just shot right through my thumb, and it was just terrible. My thumb stayed numb for a, a week. <laughs> that, trust me, that was a lesson learned. I did not know that the pin one on metal tubes in the socket has to be grounded. Well, I know now. I don't even have to be reminded of it. You know, that was such a shock. <laughs> these things can kill you. I repeat it. You can die from these things, okay? I almost died from that. My thumb almost died anyway. Oh, it was, it was terrible. I, this shot through me like, I, I cannot tell you. Well, if, for those of you who have had a good shot of electricity, it's just the strangest feeling. Fortunately, it never went any further than my thumb. Unfortunately, I still have my thumb. So we're going to go about this very slowly. Now, I told you about this right here being warped, and I had to glue it all the way down because I pulled it, and as usual, it just popped right in two. They're just so brittle. There's, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I'm going to show you what I repaired the last radio, uh, or what I used to repair the light diffuser on the last radio. Now this is it. This I got this at Hobby Lobby. This is what I used last time. It's plastic. It's used for uh, templates to make templates out of. And you'll see here, you got to have something stiffer, nice and stiff. And that's what this is. Okay. What I'm going to do is take that off eventually, lay it on here, draw a circle around it. I'm going to cut it out, put a small hole in the middle that'll fit the collar that attaches this to the shaft. It's kind of a, you know, you gotta be real careful with it, but just to let you know that these things are available in Hobby Lobby, and uh, you know, it was only uh, $2.99. You don't need a big giant sheet. Okay, this one, I don't even know what the size of this thing is. It doesn't say, as usual. Made in China, oh, fantastic, so you know it's, you know it's perfect. All right, let's go into a few details now. I just pulled this tube out. This is our 80 rectifier. And after you get it out, there's a, this base here is glued on with old glue. Now, this, these, these things are what? This is from 1936, for crying out loud. That's an old radio. And that glue they used back in the 30s is, was not very good. It was good, but not very good. And it wasn't designed to last 80 years, okay? So be, be careful. Now, I'm wiggling this one to see if it's loose. It's not loose, lucky me. If it were loose, I would take some super glue uh, gel, not the stuff that dries quickly. Use the gel, because sometimes you get it up on the glass, you want to wipe it off. You clean this real good around here with a brush, get it nice and clean, and then you let sort of let that gel go down in there. And then set that baby up like that somewhere until it dries. Don't get impatient. That's one way to fix it, okay? There's tons of ways to do this stuff, okay? 
And, but that's that's how I would do it, and that's how I have done it, and it works perfect. And it holds that holds those bases on real good, nice and tight. Sometimes these things, these tubes are in the radio so tight that you have to wiggle them around. You got to get get them out. When you get them out, in the process of doing that, you break the, this loose. Okay. And then the object here, just you know, the wires come out of the bottom of the glass tube, and then they go to each of these pins. As long as the, the wires are still connected, you're okay. You just got to glue it back on. All right. Let's let me get the rest of the tubes out. All right, here's the next one. Now this is the metal, the metal sheath tube. Okay, but the metal, it's a shield. It's a shield on the tube. And, uh, pin number one in the socket down below has to be grounded. Keep that in mind on all of these, on all of these metal tubes. And now the next one we're going to pull out is this. Here is a grid cap, I believe. Some of them are not grid caps. Some of them are something else. But I'm pretty sure these are grid caps. I haven't really studied the schematic that much yet. And these caps, they're on there. They'll sometimes pull the cap right loose from the tube. I've had them come completely off and break the wire. And say, oh, man, I, you know, and it, it happened when I first started. I wasn't aware of that. You know, these things are sometimes so stuck on. Now, you got to kind of go gently with this, you know, in case kind of gently twist back and forth now sometimes when you're twisting you're also twisting this grid cap you gotta you gotta look at that you gotta eyeball that stuff okay just don't start twisting and everything because you might be twisting the entire mess so one way to get that off of there is to take a little screwdriver if you're not sure sometimes you're pretty stuck and you just kind of give it a little twist and see if the, yeah see it's starting to come up already say okay good we can take that off now let's just pull it straight up there you go what happens if you pull this cap off? Well, it's fixable. It's flexible as long as underneath this cap is a, uh, a tip of glass, like so. And the wire comes up through that glass and is soldered to a hole in the top of this right here. So if you break that thing off there, you'll have to extract the solder from the top of the grid cap, clean it out, and then if you're lucky, you can chip away the glass just a tad around that little piece of wire that this will be off the tube of course sitting over here on the, on the desk but you can you know you set your tube up in some kind of a holder you take a little pair of like cutters or something you just chip away around that wire and then you can attach another thin wire solder it up as long as this as long as this no vacuum escape from the tube then you can take this thing put it back down over that wire run the wire through the hole and then solder it, clip it off, you're good to go. I've done that to a lot of tubes. But I did not know that until I became a member of the Antique Radio Forum. They're the ones that showed me how to do that and told me how to do that. Now look, if you're going to start out with this, this entire series is geared toward the amateur who's not done any of these or only done one and kind of gave it up or whatever. I'm not, I'm not telling you exactly how to do it. I'm giving you the way I do it. And you, it's to your advantage, highly to your advantage, to become a member of the Antique Radio Forum. And when you run into a problem, you post a query, you say, hey, look, you know, what do I do to fix it? That's what I did. I said, how do I fix this thing? And they told me how, you know. I mean, I didn't wear them out with my, you know, incessant questions. I asked certain questions that I did not know the answer to. At first, I looked around. Now, they do have a search function on the antique radio forum use it and if you can then if you can't find what you need then you say hey look i went to the search at, uh, function i couldn't find this can somebody help me with this then you'll see there'll be 20 guys you're going to get everybody you're going to get <laughs> the thing i noticed about the antique radio forum you got some people that don't know, know any more than you do and they're going to give you answers that make no sense but they're trying to impress everybody okay then you got the guy who thinks he knows everything you know, he's been in this for 50,000 years, and there's not a question he doesn't know. He knows everything about electronic theory, and he gives you, you know, a one-hour explanation for a 10-second answer. You know, <laughs> those are, you want the guy, you know, you have to filter through. Filter through all that crap and find the guy that will give you the answer. By the way, for those that may not know, there was a guy named Norm Leal, L-E-A-L. -E he was a uh, mainstay on the Antique Radio Forum. He helped me a lot. Norm has passed away. I was not aware of that. Anyway, become a member. It doesn't cost anything. It's all free, and you will learn so much. Now, one more thing about removing tubes. See, there again, we have a, we have a base here that I don't want to break loose. Let's see if it's loose already. 
nope, nice and tight. Now what you can do, if you're unsure, is you can take a screwdriver, a little larger one maybe, and twist it, and that'll help. Get, I've had tubes so stuck in these, these sockets, I didn't think I'd ever get them out. Go down here and grab it around the base itself, okay? And then wiggle it a little bit. Don't, be, don't grab all tubes by the glass and pull them out. You can use the, the base, even if the base is loose, you can still use the base to get them out. Okay, now we got two tubes out of there. Now comes the fun and games. This one here is the same way. Let me go ahead and remove this one. This is a shield, okay? Which is actually no different than the shield on this one right here, okay? Well, only these are covered. Now we go ahead and we're going to take this. I'm going to see if I can use this as a, as a fulcrum. See if I can get this one up. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's budging a little bit. Got to go easy like easy. You know, you don't want to act like a fool on this stuff. You know, just If you're in a hurry, don't even bother working on a radio. If you're impatient, stay. find another hobby, okay? Because you're in the wrong one. Trust me on that, I know. Let me see here. Come on, baby. You're going to come up all the way. Looks like she's pretty, fairly loose. Uh, see, this is one of these stubborn jobs. you got to be careful. She's coming up very slowly. Take your time. Take your time. It will come up. There we go. Don't muscle these things. There we go. We got it off. Now we can go ahead and take the tube shield off. This cap here will have to be de-rusted and cleaned. It's kind of funky and everything. You want the inside clean in particular. Okay, the tube shield comes off. Now the tube. Now this tube is down in a, uh, a collar. Get a hold of that base again. First of all, let's find out if it's loose. No, it's not loose. Lo loose, I'm talking about the glass from the base. No. Now we can go ahead and take that out, all right? So there's our tubes. Is there one more? There should be one more. Let me see. Yeah, it's all the way in the back back here. Again, another one of those metal tubes. And it, too, has a grid cap on it, okay? Got to be careful with these, too. Take your time. You can do this. You know, that's real easy. That baby come off with just no problem at all. These tubes are a lot tougher than the glass tubes, okay? You can kind of wiggle them back and forth. And stuff, but don't wiggle them so much as to destroy the socket, you know? <laughs> like I said, don't gorilla this stuff. Now look at there. Now the radio looks almost empty already. All right, she looks almost empty already. All right, let's get all these in the bag and I'll come back. Now this is where these tubes will stay. I'll be putting them in a separate box, a small box, and keep them off to the side somewhere. Uh, I have kind of a cluttered up bench right now. I need to clear off this stuff too. It goes to the Atwater Kent. Once I get that out of there, we'll be good to better. You know, we'll be good to go better than we are now. And uh, now you might ask yourself, well, how do I know what tube goes where? Jeez, you know, well, you got your schematic to tell you, but it really doesn't show you sometimes exactly where they're placed. You have to, you, you take pictures, you write down, you know, make little drawings on papers, whatever you have to do. And now this particular radio has the tube number written right down in it on the socket. Isn't that cool? That's where the 6F7 goes. Down there is the, uh, we're kind of lucky on this. Not all tubes, not all radios are like this, okay? And there's the 75 goes there. There's the uh, 6F6, the 80 tube. And this other one all the way in the back, what is it? 6K7, okay? 6K7. So we're lucky on this, no problem. That's what I like about these airline radios made by Belmont. They did that for quite a while. I don't know how long they did it, but... Okay, I'll be, using, I'll be doing uh, short segments on this radio. I'm not going to overload you with a ton of information. I think that's all we need to cover for today. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repair this speaker. The last thing we're going to do is something I have not done for a while. Uh, I think I've only done it twice in all the years I've been on YouTube. And that is, we've only done one completed video on this radio, and we got a lot of comments, which I'm very glad to see. We got 74 of them. Let me see if I can get over here a little bit. We got, what? come on, come on, camera. We got, yeah, we got 74 comments uh, right there. And, uh, most of them are, you know, I'm glad to see you back, John. It's, you know, 
get well soon, that sort of thing. And I'm going to go down the comments, but you know, the ones that just say, I'm glad you're back, we'll bypass those and pick up the ones that are different, you know, and then I'll comment right here instead of writing them all out, okay? Gas Man says, after all these years, Mr. John, I'm still impressed by the way you teach. Yeah, well, my wifey was never too impressed. <laughs> she used to tell me to shut up, especially when I was trying to teach her how to drive. <laughs> she wound up going to someone else to learn how to drive. I think it was my brother-in-law. <laughs> Here's one, Tommy Baywick, he says, or Bewick, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. He said he knew if he waited long enough, I'd be back with a uh, radio restoration. I think he was one of the guys that hounded me, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, every time I turned around, I was getting somebody saying, when are you going to do a radio? When are you going to do a radio? <laughs> yeah, here, and here's, here's one, uh, Gavin W.B., he said Norm Leal died. He's a great guy who will be sorely missed. He, he will be. I was, he, he answered a lot of my questions. Very patient individual, you know. I'd kind of, I, you know, after a while, you learn to just send a message to the guys that don't want to try to impress you with their vast knowledge, you know. This guy, this guy had it. He didn't have to prove to anybody. <clears throat> he would tell me what I could do with a problem I had, and almost every time he was 100% right. And uh, yeah, here's a fella, Logan Lyon. He said, finally, you're back. Your videos on restoring old radios is what got me into the hobby. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Just be careful. <laughs> I don't know how long you've been in the hobby, but... He says, although I prefer newer FM capable, capable models. Well, I do do, but, you know, I like to stick with the, the, the wooden radios. That's kind of my thing, you know. And I used to be basket cases, really bad basket cases. You know, the kind that you see after uh, Buzz 1151 gets done with them, you know. I could take them and really make them work better and look better. You know how it is, you know, poor guy. <clears throat> and then here's a guy who talks about an old radio that I never finished. He's right. It's a uh, airline uh, floor model radio. He said you ne he said we never did see you finish the cabinet with the radio inside. He's right. That's Chrissy, four four zero five. He's right. We'll be getting to that. If if this radio thing all turns out good and everybody's happy and you know the world is right and we haven't suffered any nuclear weapons, no problem. You know we'll eventually get to it. Okay. Here's a good fella. <laughs> he wants. A, this is a Sakari. S looks like. S C A I R R I he says, you know, looking forward to the radio restoration. You still have the pinball machine? Yes, I do. Uh, I got, I had two pinball machines. I sold one to John, to the son of Johnny U, our Northern Yankee, here in Arkansas, and his son was, was still piddling around with it. I guess the other one is just sitting. Okay, too many things to do, not enough time to do. You know how it is. You know. Then we got the old troller. Uh, so happy to see you back 10 years ago. I talked to you into restoring my grandfather's Philco 37 2670. And now here we got old Radio Al. He said he got COVID over Christmas. Uh, where my, where's my pencil at? He said, he said, I've got COVID over Christmas myself. Big blowout on that COVID over Christmas, by the way. Uh, Al and I aren't the only ones. <laughs> He says he's glad to see me do the radio and TV or T-Bird videos are right up his alley. He has a lot of radios, this fella here. You need to go check him out. Old Radio Owl. Check his uh, channel. Here's a fella named KA9SZX. He said he lost a few friends due to COVID. Yeah, and that's right. You know, look, this, this COVID business, some of y'all are being very cavalier about that. I got some comments about, don't be cavalier about COVID. I'll tell you why. It's mutating. The rules that applied two years ago no longer apply now. It's mutating. Every year it's going to mutate. I think what was going to happen before it's over, we're going to have to get like flu shots, uh, you know, just like we do flu shots. You know, every year it's a different uh, mix of serum depending on the type of flu coming down the pike. So don't just don't get too cavalier about that. Don't 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 lay in your deathbed and say, "Geez, I should have paid more attention." Okay. Don't let these Chinese communists kill you. There's Cool Blue Lights, one of the first guys I subscribed to also. He was a young man. He was, I don't know, I guess he was 16 or 17. Worked on a radio for a year with the help of old, I mean, with uh, Old American Five Radio and got that thing going. And I <laughs> he was so proud and I was proud of him. He's also got O negative blood, which is kind of cool, which uh, has been proven to diminish the effects of COVID. Uh, here's a fella. 
this is what I love the most, I think. Uh, Zundfolge, Z-U-N-D-F-O-L-G-E. He says, wow, how did you find out all the details of where that radio was made? This is referring... <laughs> including the names of the people they worked on that radio. Very impressive and cool. <laughs> He's talking about that Belmont uh, building. Well, I'll tell you what, Zund Folga, 1432, look up the word facetious. <laughs> oh, let me see what we got here. Donald Warwick again. He says, you know, he, he says I'm an excellent teacher and guide. I don't know, you know, I'm a wife, you never believe that, you know. <laughs> she used to tell me, shut up all the time, you know. I can do this, shut up, I don't need you telling me how to do it, you know. Her mother was the same way, great-grandma. I don't need you tell me anything. Because <laughs> I always used to get up in the morning, and grandma would be sitting at the table eating her breakfast, and I'd walk up and I'd say, uh, I have to go downtown or something, grandma. Uh, is there anything you like or need to know before I go? I don't need anything from you. <laughs> Fun stuff. I used to really, we laugh about that all the time. Okay, he said, anyway, uh, Donald says he likes the way I teach. And uh, he said, I spoke about the difference between younger and older folks. Uh, I find the ones that take the energy to actually write back and say, what, you're doing it wrong. I do it like this. I actually do not have much practical experience at much. They spend their lives complaining and trying to bend the world to their way of thinking. He's true about that. You've got the guys that complain all the time. And then you got the guys that think they know everything more than you do, you know, the know-it-all crowd. Then you got the I got you guys. The I got you guys are the ones that <laughs> they try to, you know, you can do an entire video and really, you know, do an excellent job depending on who you are and what the subject is. But he, if, he, if he can find or she can find one little thing that's wrong, they'll zero in on it. Yeah, they, I got you, I got you. That's not right, that's not right, you know. That they live for those kinds of things. <laughs> Uh-oh, I got TD7456. Where's the, where are they at? Here, here we are. He says, uh, I'm the main culprit that got him into the hobby. <laughs> this is George H. right here from Michigan. He said he, he's glad I enjoyed the two Christmas cards with the uh, instruction for that. Fancy remote control. Uh, here's a fellow named Sierra John. Now, this is kind of cool, see? I found the first video in this video interesting. He said, I wouldn't mind learning more about radios, even if he never rebuilds one, even if he never restores one or buys one or tears it apart or anything. He's interested in learning. Good for him. That's, that's very important. And uh, let me see. Who else we got? We're getting toward the Mr. Bread Dog, <laughs> 67. He said, I have been watching you for a long time. I just looked back at the airline 6241. It was about seven years ago. And I watched some of your uh, Sylvania TV and Seaberg jukebox. Do you still have the sets? I still have the Sylvania TV, of course. And I still have the jukebox, yes. The 6241, I don't think so. And uh, he said, hope this video series will be for dummies like me. Well, certainly you're not a dummy. Trust me. Anybody who tunes in and wants to learn something is not a dummy, you know. Oh, now here's a fella here. He says Dickens Avenue of Chicago was also where Majestic Factory was, which when they went bankrupt became a, a Zenith factory. That's exactly right. It was, uh, matter of fact, it was right across the street from the uh, Belmont building. Uh, incidentally, Belmont was uh, bought out by Philco, I believe, and uh, Philco used it to make uh, refrigerators, something like that, until it finally all shut down. They have a fence around it now because of falling... Uh, debris and everything. That's a shame. Let a building just disintegrate like that. Johnny Empress, he says, you know, these yellow uh, light diffusers and the yellow dial gauge uh, scales, he said, maybe they weren't yellow at all when they first started out. Maybe they just yellowed from age, and then when you get one made by a reproduction, they, they think it was yellow to begin with, so they, they reproduce it in yellow. Yeah, probably true, you know. <laughs> I like the yellow better than the white. He said, hey, it could have been white, you know. And, uh, Spec Ops 56. I can't believe that boy's still around. Welcome back to the bench, brother. I've been missing your radio videos. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Thanks. Um, if you get stuck on a... <laughs> I love this one. Classic Dude Dash Mike 8174 says, Gee, John, if you get stuck working on that radio, maybe Buzz could help you out. <laughs> you know, I think Buzz paid him to do that. He's that kind of guy, you know. 
Well, I get, now this one here I don't understand. This is from Star Carrier, 1874. Dreamt up. I don't know what, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> well, that's it. That's done with the comments. Until next time, sorry for the long drawn out video. I always like doing this sort of thing. Until next time, this is John. Good grief, it's really coming down now. Check this out. I'm going to have to contact old 64 Goat and have him send me a snowblower. <laughs>